Welcome back to uh, Massey Church Online from St Leonard's Church in Lexington, Colchester. And today we're thinking about Lent. But the way we're thinking about Lent is to think about uh, pancakes, which a lot of us eat before we get to Lent. And actually, we've put this video up a little bit early, showing you how to make pancakes so you can eat loads and loads of pancakes before Lent begins. There's two important things about Lent we're going to think about today. The first one is, is preparing. That's a word that means uh, getting ready. So in this video, uh, we'll be making a chef's hat. We'll be actually making pancakes ourselves. We'll be preparing, getting ready. And we'll be thinking about how Lent is a period of time where we get ready ourselves to celebrate Easter. How can we prepare ourselves and get ready to celebrate Easter? Easter. Well, an important way of thinking about that is the second uh, thing we're going to learn about uh, Lent today, and that Lent is about turning, turning away from things, turning towards God. And if you think about it, when you make pancakes, and when you play with pancakes, you like to flip them, turn them. So let's start with a little bit of preparation. We're going to see if we can make ourselves something every chef should have. Well, I wonder if you've guessed what this is. I'm sure you probably have, but just in case, I've made a chef's hat. And the reason I've made it is because I'm going to be making some pancakes later. So if you're going to be making some pancakes, you might need a chef's hat. So I'm going to show you how to make one. All you will need is a strip of fairly stiff card or stiff paper and you need to measure it so that it goes around your head. Now I'm not going to close it up yet because I've got to do something else first and what I'm going to do is I'm, I've got here some crinkly paper. Now I've got white paper but um, I've cheated because the other side of it is Christmas paper because I thought you might not have tissue paper, you might not have any crinkly paper like I had, so what might you have? And I thought, well, you might have some leftover Christmas paper. And it doesn't matter how scrunched up it is, because you want it to be scrunchy, but you want to use the white side, because chef's hats, as we know, are white. But you know, they weren't always white. Sometimes they were lots of different colours. And the head chef, the top man in the kitchen, would wear a different coloured hat from everybody else. But then after a little while, they decided that actually white looked, looked the cleanest. And so now, particularly in France, where chef, the word chef is a French word, they started to wear these white hats. And now I think most chefs do. Now, you need a piece of paper, slightly longer than your strip of card. Because what you're going to do is if you go to the middle and you pick up the thread and you just fold over and make a sort of a pleat or a crease. Now you then crease it with your finger, but you don't need to go right up to the end. Just crease it with your finger and just to keep it in place, you might want to put a little bit of glue. So just to hold that crease in place. And you only need to do a few, so I'm going to do one more here. Um, you can do as many as you like, of course. It depends how much bigger your paper is, because each time you make a crease, you take up a bit more paper. So I'm going to make one there, a little bit of glue. And one more. And there is a story that if hats were worn in kitchens, because of something that happened to Henry VIII. Now, we don't know if this is true or not, but apparently Henry VIII, who lived a long while ago, um, he was eating his meal and he came across a human hair. Well, Henry VIII wasn't a very tolerant man at the best of times, and he was very, very angry, and he sent for the chef. And from that day on, all the people who worked in his kitchen had to wear a hat. Don't think they look like this one, but a hat nonetheless. Now I'm going to make one more crease and I think that'll be enough. 
So, the tradition is that people wear a hat, particularly to keep their hair out of the food. Right, now my piece of paper is now about the same size as my headband. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some glue all along the headband, top of the headband, and then I've got to remember I want the white side showing, don't I? So I'm going to stick it all down so the red will be inside. And then what I need to do is I need to now fold it over and I need to glue down here so that when I fold this bit over, they attach to each other. And just to make it nice and strong, I'm just going to staple here. I don't want the staples near my head, so I'm putting the stapler the other way round. So the scratchy bits are on the outside. So now I have, well, a sort of chef's hat, but um, it's a bit tall, isn't it? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to scrunch the top, and then I'm going to go in through the bottom and I'm going to scrunch all those bits together and I then need to somehow join all the scrunched bits together inside the hat so I'm going to use a bit of my stapler to staple it together you might be able to glue it or you can sellotape it and then you've got a lovely chef's hat so I'm going to put mine on and I've got my frying pan, so I'm all ready to make my pancakes. Good luck with yours. Well, I am in my comfortable storytelling chair and I hope that you've got somewhere comfortable to sit so that you can listen to this story that Jesus told. And this is a story about turning turning away from something bad back towards uh, something good. It teaches us a lot about God's forgiveness and God's love for us. And it's known as the prodigal son or the lost son. And there was a, a young man who decided that he'd like to leave home and he asked his father for some money to do so. And he went to a far off country and really enjoyed spending that money. But suddenly, he discovered that he had nothing left. He'd spent his money foolishly and now the land that he was in had no food. It was experiencing a famine. He became really sad and really desperate. He ended up uh, getting a job feeding pigs. Maybe, maybe he might even have eaten some of the food for the pigs ooh, because he was so hungry. But while he was in that difficult place, he thought back to the home that he'd come from and he remembered how there everybody had had enough to eat. So he decided, he decided to turn, he decided to change his mind and turn back and that he would go back home, say sorry to his father for all the things that he'd done wrong. Now you might think, that the father would have stood at the door and said, oh, I told you so, you've come back now, have you? But actually, as soon as he saw his son returning, he raced out to find him and hugged him and welcomed him home. The son said to the father, I'm really sorry for what I've done. I'm happy to be the lowest of the low here. Just please take me back. But the father interrupted him and said, get the best food and the best robes for my son. We're going to have a great, great party. Now that story is a parable and it's telling us about God's love. It's telling us that if we turn to God, if we try to go home to God and say sorry to God, 
He doesn't just say, oh, okay, come back. He runs out and embraces us and is overjoyed at the way of return to him. And he makes for us a great party. So when you flip your pancake this year, think about turning. The word we use is repentance, turning back towards God and turning our back on those things that are bad for us and other people. Hi everyone and welcome to my very first live cookery demonstration. So uh, Easter is a time when we think about food in particular, chocolate and eggs and all that lovely stuff. But Lent starts also with food. So you get food things at the beginning of Lent and at the end of Lent. And I'm sure you know what we make at the beginning of Lent, so before Lent starts, we make pancakes to use up all the eggs and um, make a, a, a point of having lots of sweet things if people are giving up sweet things during, uh, during Lent. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make pancakes. Yummy, I love pancakes. Anyway, I've written out the ingredients. It's very simple. So here are the ingredients. You're going to need 100 grams of plain flour, two large eggs, and 300 millilitres of milk, and a little bit of oil for frying at the end. So what we do, we get the milk, and we get the flour, and we get two of these eggs, and we put them all into a jug, mix it up, mix, 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 nice and smooth. And what we then do, it's very easy. You can put a pinch of salt in as well. Some people like it just to flavour it a bit. We then get our pancake pan. I know you've all been used to racing around the church with your pancake pans and we pour it in. Um, and you can't see my hob, but it's just down here. So I'm going to pour my mixture into the pan. Let's see how it goes, shall we? Right, and we missed out the tricky boring bit, which is where the pancake is cooking. So I have cooked my pancake on the hob, and what comes next is the really fun bit. It's the bit where you get to toss the pancake. So can you see my pancake here? I'm going to give it, you can make, you can do either a little flip like that or you can do a really big flip. Let me see how big a flip I can do. Woo! And again. <laughs> and one more time. <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little bit um, scary sometimes. I call all three of those. Can you catch your pancakes in your pan? Don't get them on the ceiling. Try not to get them on the floor. Make sure they stay in your pan and you can keep, cook the other side of it then. So, what do we do with the pancakes once they are cooked? I had to think about all the things I like to put on pancakes. And I've got a little list. You might want to follow this list. Top 10 things you can put on a pancake. So we started off with Nutella and banana chocolate spread and banana that's always nice you can put on it very traditional lemon and sugar you could put on it some maple syrup that's nice isn't it you could put some jam on it and some sprinkles that was a very strange suggestion i'm not sure which of Ellen will suggested that one you don't have to have some sweet you could have cheese and ham on them or even if you're feeling a little bit wild you could probably put spread some pesto on and then sprinkle some cheese on and it'd be really really nice so have fun if you choose any of these um and maybe you can think of some other toppings to have what else have i got here marmite marmite and pancakes maybe you never know i've never tried it but it could be good i've got some honey I've got all some caramel spread oh, that might be nice um for whatever, whatever toppings you're doing uh let me know which ones you've tried let me know if they're good or if they were absolutely disgusting 
um, and you can either email in to Junior Church or um, pop your suggestions um, onto our Facebook site. Okay, whatever you do, have fun, enjoy them. Good luck for Lent and we'll see you soon. Bye. So we've prepared ourselves. We have our chef's hat. Uh, we've had our recipe for pancakes. We may even have eaten some of them already, but what have pancakes got to do uh, with Lent? Well, another name for Pancake Day is Shrove Tuesday, and that comes the day before Ash Wednesday, which is when Lent begins. People used to eat pancakes because they're trying to eat more simply during Lent, so they had fewer distractions and could concentrate uh, on God. But there's something else I think that's really helpful about Pancake Day when we're trying to think about Lent, and that's this. In our story, we heard about someone who turned back and was forgiven. And of course, we turn a pancake because if we leave it cooking on one side, it gets very dark and burnt and not very nice to eat. So when we flip our pancakes, we can think about turning away from bad things and turning back to God. We have a word for that. That's called uh, repentance. Repentance. And in fact, Shrove Tuesday, which is the other name for Pancake Day or Shrive Tuesday, comes from a very old word about what it means to say sorry for things and uh, be forgiven, be forgiven. So when we say sorry to God, God promises to forgive us. When you have your pancakes and you flip them over, whether you're cooking them or playing with a pancake that you've made, think about how you can turn like that young man did turn uh, towards goodness turn towards god to say sorry to god and to receive his love and forgiveness it's a pancake party Well, that was my family having fun making some pancakes, but they're quite difficult to toss, aren't they? Real pancakes tend to sort of fall into pieces once you've tossed them a couple of times. So last year when we were at church, we had a pop-up pancake party and we made some pancakes from paper plates. And then we were able to have lots of fun tossing them and playing games with them. So I'm gonna show you today how to make them. So it's really easy. All you need is a couple of paper plates. And what you're going to do, put some yellow paint and paint the rounded side of the plates. Now, if you haven't got any paint, then it doesn't really matter. You could, you could colour them in with crayon, couldn't you? Or you can keep them just white. You can still have some fun with them. And then what you need to do is to take some newspaper Tear it up. And then you're going to scrunch it. Just lay it on one of the paper plates. You don't need very much. That should do it. About four. Crunchy balls there. 
And then, this is when you've got your painted plates, of course. You fit it together and then take a stapler and staple all the way around the outside and then you've got your pancake. So it should look like that. So I've just got a couple more staples to put in there. If you haven't got a stapler, I think some sticky tape work just as well. Now, that's quite a solid little pancake, but it's nice and light, so you'll be able to play lots of games with it. You can balance it on your head, see how far you could walk, you run with it. You could see how many flips with your pancake you could do in a minute, or you could have a pancake race with a friend or time yourself, couldn't you? And I tell you what, they make really good frisbees. You could practice throwing it to somebody in your family see if you can get it into a box. Right, I've got my frying pan. Shall I see if I can? Yep. Well, I did just about, didn't I? But have a look at what happened with the ones that I made earlier on. Perhaps you'd like to have a go at playing some of the games that we thought of. Hello, I'm in my den, which I've built in the sitting room. So at the moment, it's a bit difficult, isn't it? Sometimes to go out uh, to a nice, quiet countryside spot for a walk. We have to stay nearby. Uh, we can't go away on holiday or stay somewhere else to have a break like that. And sometimes when we're all at home all the time in lockdown at the moment, it can all be a bit crazy all of the time and it's a bit difficult to find some quiet and calm space. So I've built this den in the sitting room so it's peaceful and it's dark and I can shut myself away a little bit um, and it's just a bit different from everyday life and how things are the rest of the time. Now a lot of you might be lucky enough to have one of those pop-up tents um, or a pop-up Wendy house or something like that that you could use. I've just got a few chairs and a dark sheet and some cushions and things like that and a nice blanket to make it soft and comfortable in here. And if you ask your grown-ups, they'll be able to tell you what you can use and where you can make a den for yourself. It's a really nice thing to be able to do. I've also got a nice light so that when the sun goes down a bit more, I can turn my light on. If you have a torch, you could use that or some fairy lights. Maybe your grown up could help you use some of those. And I've got some cushions because I, like I like to hold a nice soft cushion. You could fill it with blankets or pillows or even teddy bears, which are nice. I've also got some other things which are nice to hold. I've got a little wooden cross here which is made of lovely smooth wood and it's really nice just to hold in your hand but you could also use something like a nice stone. This is one with a painting on that we found a while ago. Um, but again it's a lovely smooth thing to hold, it just feels really nice. So you can fill your den with lots of lovely soft, calm, comfortable things and just have 
a bit of quiet time, a bit of time away when you can think about things that are on your mind and you can pray. You can talk to God about those things that are on your mind because there are lots of different ways we can pray. Sometimes at Messy Church, we write things down, don't we? And then somebody reads them out at the end or oh, we've done lots of different things. Sometimes we say our prayers out loud and you can do that or you can just say them to yourself in your head if you want to. That's fine. And also sometimes it's very hard to know where to start with praying, isn't it? Because there are so many things in the world, so many things going on, especially at the moment. But if you sit in your den and you get comfortable and you've got something like your holding cross or your stone or just something to cuddle, even if it's a cushion, you can just think about those things that you'd most like to, to, to lift up to God at the moment. And I always think of things that I feel sorry about when I'm praying. Often it's things, not necessarily things I've done, but things that I shouldn't have, I should have done, but I didn't. So things where I could have been more helpful or more kind or more thoughtful. Um, and I like to always be thankful. I like to think about all the things I have still got, even in this strange time, to be thankful for. And that includes having a roof over my head, not just a den, but the roof over my head. I've got a nice garden outside. And actually in Colchester, we've got lots of life, lovely parks and places like that we can walk in. So I'm always really grateful for that. I'm also really grateful for all the people who are helping so much at the moment. Um, not just doctors and nurses and hospital cleaners and all the staff that contribute to the doctors and the hospitals and the health service, but also for teachers and teaching assistants and school staff. And so I think whether you're in school or whether you're doing school at home, teachers and all those other school staff are working so hard in really difficult situations at the moment. So I'm really thankful for everything they're doing as well. And for all the people who deliver my shopping at the moment, um, all those people who are under extra pressure at the moment. So I'd like to pray for them, be grateful for everything they're doing and just pray that they're not too stressed, not too tired, um, that they're able to get some peace and quiet, whether or not it's in a den like this. And I also like to pray for other people I know who are having a difficult time at the moment, whether that's because they're poorly, whether it's because they're one of those key workers who's working so hard in extra difficult situations, whether they're sad or lonely. I think we're all missing our friends and family, aren't we? And that can be really sad sometimes. And it's OK to say when you're praying that you're sad. Um, so those are the sort of things I like to think about. And I'm just going to sit still and quiet in here for a minute and think about all those things and lift them up to God. And the important thing about praying is that also that you listen as well as talk. So that's why it's nice to be in this little space where I haven't got other people running around or other things going on in the background. So I can st sit still and quiet and listen. And maybe this is something that you'd like to try doing all through Lent, through that time between now and up, right up to Easter. Just make that time and that space in your day uh, to be still, to listen and to pray. And hopefully you'll get that lovely sense of peace and love from God when you do that. So, have you made yourself a prayer den? I'm in my uh, prayer den here. Think about those little bits of advice we've just heard about how we can pray now. And what I'm going to do is count down from three to one. And then when I get to one, you can pause the video. And maybe think about what you'd like to pray about and how you'd like to pray today. And then pray in your prayer den if you've got one. And then press play again. So here we go. Three, two, one. And pause.
when we come to the end of a prayer, we often say, Amen, of course. And when we come to the end of a time of prayer, often we use the Lord's Prayer. And Kirsty is going to lead us in the Lord's Prayer right now. First of all, we start with our hands together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. You've caught me with my feet up, which doesn't happen very often. I've worked quite hard this week and I thought, do you know what? I'm going to be kind to myself today. I thought I'll put my feet up under the blanket, have a nice hot drink and I'll read the paper. Give myself a bit of a treat. Now I expect probably you've been feeling a bit, a bit fed up, haven't you, in the last few weeks? Most of you probably haven't been able to go back to school. I expect you've got mums and dads who are having to work from home. And it actually can make you feel a little bit down, doesn't it? And I thought what we all need is a little bit of kindness. And so I came up with an idea that I think you might like. So I'm going to go and show you what I've done. So. This is my idea. It's a box of kindness. Here it is. I bet that cheers you up just looking at it, doesn't it? A lot of love going on there, isn't there? How can it be a box of kindness? Well, we've got to put something in it, haven't we? So I've thought of some things which I think could be kind to you or could be kind to your family. And I thought over the coming weeks, as we work our way towards Easter, you could pull out some of these ideas out of your box and they could make your day and your family's day just a little bit better. So let me show you what I thought of. So, on this sheet, we've got lots of different ideas. Some of them will make you happy, and some of them will make other people happy. So, look at the, the top one. It says, feed the birds and watch them. Well, you don't even have to have a garden do that to do that, do you? You could put something on a window box or uh, at the bottom of your steps or something. And it always makes you feel better when you see the birds eating up those seeds and goodness me they do need them don't they when it's been so frosty tell someone a joke well, i know you're really good at telling jokes that always makes people laugh even though they're not funny sometimes just telling a joke can make other people laugh can't it and do you know what they usually want to tell you a joke back don't they snuggle up in a blanket well, that's what i was doing earlier on wasn't it that always makes you feel warm and cosy. Put on your favourite song and sing. Ooh, do you think that's going to make your family happy? I don't know. You have to have a little think whether you do it in your bedroom or, or do it with everybody else. Perhaps everybody else will join in and then you'll all be happy. Uh, have a moan free day. Oh, that would be a hard one, wouldn't it? It wouldn't half make everybody happy though, wouldn't it? We, you know, sometimes we don't even notice that we're moaning, do we? Do we? I know that I moan quite a lot. Quite tricky to do that one. Uh, here's one that you could do with your family. Watch a favourite film with your family. 
or look at some old photographs with your family. That's always good to do, isn't it? Remembering happy times and to see how you've changed as you've grown up. Uh, what about help to make a meal? That would be good, wouldn't it? Because you'd have a lovely meal to eat and I'm sure your parents would appreciate a little bit of help when they're cooking. So we've got to cut these out and put them in the box. Now, this sheet is going to be uh, on the website as well, so you'll be able to download it. But actually, I'm sure that you can think of lots of your own things to put in your box because you know what makes your family happy and you know what makes you happy. Let's just put a few in. Now there's enough here for you to pull one out every other day when Lent starts. But you can put in as many or as few as you like. And of course, you could always pop them back in again. So you get to do your favourite things twice. There we are. That's just six I'm going to pop in. Now I've started off another box as well. It's behind there. Now, that box, I don't know what it had in it, but it was actually white, so that was nice and easy to decorate that one with, with stickers and felt tips. But this box had tea bags in it, so I've covered it with some paper. And I've just started to put some, some stickers on it. You can put what you like on it. I'm going to pop those inside. Quite good though, because it's got a little flap. And you can take things out easily. And I just need to put that label on the front. It says, a box of kindness. There we go. Now, I had another idea. I'll just check that there's nobody looking. I think we're all right. I'm going to put some chocolates in as well. It might be a little bit like an advent calendar. Now, you might decide to give your chocolate away. Or you might decide to give it to somebody, which would be very kind, wouldn't it? Right, let's just have a little go and see what I pull out my first kind thing. Definitely got a chocolate. Mm. Oh, here we go. Make your bed. <laughs> well, that will make somebody in your house happy, won't it? Well, let's hope that your box of kindness or your pot of kindness or whatever box or pot you decide to use makes everybody in your house feel a little bit more cheerful. I'm sure it will. And I'd love to see some pictures of it and also some videos or pictures of you tossing your pancakes. Perhaps you could send them to the Junior Church email address forward to seeing you again soon. Bye. Well, there we have it. We've had a wonderful messy church. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope that some of those things are really useful to you. Enjoy some yummy pancakes, but really enjoy doing something kind for others, kind for yourself, and saying some lovely prayers. We'll see you back at St. Leonard soon, I hope. And in a moment, we're going to go out by singing joyfully. And in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, may you be blessed this day and always. Amen.
Go out.